Hello, everybody, and uh, thank you very much for participating in uh, this webinar. It's targeting CBIT country focal points, and uh, the focus is to um, provide some present some information on how to use and benefit from the CBIT global coordination platform. My name is uh, Frederick Stown, and I am uh, part of the global uh, CBIT coordination team in Copenhagen at UNEP-DCU Partnership. Uh, this webinar will last maximum uh, one hour, and uh, it will also be available um, at the uh, CBIT Global Coordination Platform after we have done it here. So um, this webinar will um, contain an introduction to the CBIT uh, Global Coordination Platform. And I will do this introduction. And subsequently, uh, my colleague Anna Cardosa will uh, do a presentation on how to use the CBIT Global Coordination Platform. And lastly, we have a Q&A session. The Q&A session is, is, is basically uh, the most important part of this webinar. So please feel free to um, ask questions and, and, and use the function where you, you, you write your, your question throughout the webinar. So the first uh, presentation is a short introduction to the CBIT Global Coordination Platform. The bigger context is that the, the CBIT was established with the Paris Agreement. Uh, the paragraph uh, 84 in the Paris Agreement decided to establish a capacity building initiative for transparency in order to build institutional and technical capacity, both pre and post 2020. And, um, the, the aim of this initiative is to support developing countries upon request in meeting at enhanced transparency requirements as defined in Article 13 of the Paris Agreement. After the, the, the CPIT uh, was established, it was also uh, agreed to develop a CPIT global coordination platform. And um, the platform was launched in April 2017 and is now fully operational. The platform uh, will enable coordination, maximize peer learning opportunities, and enable knowledge sharing to facilitate transparency enhancements among countries with CBIT projects. The platform is funded by the GEF and jointly implemented by UN Environment and UNDP with UNEP-DTU partnership as executing partner. Just to also provide the context a little bit, the CBIT is, is, is an initiative that also has been going on for, for some years now. And uh, we have 41 countries that have initiated the process to access the funds. 14 from Africa, 12 from Latin America and the Caribbean, six from Asia and the Pacific, six from Europe and Central Asia, one from the Middle East and two global projects. Whereas this CBIT global coordination platform is one of the global projects. The average project budget is about 1.1 million US dollars. We, the, the, the global team here in Copenhagen, we are very excited about this platform and we see a lot of potential in actually um, facilitating peer learning and knowledge exchange among all the countries that have CBIT projects. And um, a few examples of how countries can benefit from participating in the platform uh, could be that um, it's possible to follow at in the plat at the platform is is possible to follow the implementation of CBIT project outputs and then reach out to the country focal point to learn from the implementation of a specific output of interest. So there will you will also see that in the next presentation. But all countries they have their own project page where there will be information available about how far the project implementation is advancing. So if you are a country focal point and you are looking for lessons learned um, from other countries, peer learning opportunities, then it's a good idea to, to, to look at other country um, pages and see if there are any output that are similar to the ones that, that you are going to implement. Another um, area that 
could be interesting to look at is that if you are actually, if you are designing CBIT projects, the platform provides easy access to understand what other projects focus on and what the progress indicators are. So if you're about to design a CBIT project, it's an excellent way to get inspiration to shape the project. So there's a full overview of all uh, CBIT projects globally and the different outputs and progress indicators of each project. Also, when you implement project activities, country focal points are supposed to upload documents, workshop reports, analysis and other documents generated by the project. So this will give users of the platform access to a wealth of information and learning. So each project is actually supposed to upload all information, all information generated by the, the project and that will be available also um, at the project page of the country. You will also be able to do a yearly self-assessment of uh, your transparency capacity and that will help you to um, to, to guide you in, in how to implement activities and, and bridge gaps in transparency systems. Finally, we have webinars and other knowledge exchange services. We also, we are all part of this global CBIT family. And um, this is a new initiative, it's the transparency mechanism of the Paris Agreement. And all countries are facing similar challenges. So this platform was put in place to support countries and facilitate um, peer learning. But this can only be done if all country focal points invest time in updating country profiles and actively participate in peer learning opportunities. This global, co co global coordination platform is only uh, useful and will have an impact if you all contribute. So I really hope that, that you will invest the time needed to, uh, to update information and uh, participate in in activities. The target for the CBIT, uh, as stated in the programming directions for Jeff, is to support a minimum of 100 countries. So there will be, once that we advance more with, um, with, project, with more projects and more projects are starting to get implemented, um, we will have a lot of information available in this platform. So the purpose is to give users easy and structured access to information about all projects now and in the future. There will also be in-person workshops coming up in the coming years, and uh, we'll all get a chance to, to know each other. And finally, um, yeah, I would like to welcome you to the CBIT family. We, um, I hope this platform can enable knowledge sharing and, uh, and facilitate peer learning, as I said, and if you have any questions or suggestions on how to improve this common space, uh, please feel free to get in touch. So this is um, this was the first presentation introducing the the global coordination platform, and um, the next presentation will be done by my colleague Anna Cardosa, that is also part of the the, the team here in Copenhagen. Good morning and good afternoon to all of you. Um, I am Anna Cardoso. I am working also in the Civic Global Coordination Platform. Mainly, my role has been um, more of a business analyst for this business case of this platform. And so I've been quite involved in the design and in the, um, in the, in the design choices that we have made for, for this platform. Uh, I remind you that you you are you, you can at all times um, provide questions. Uh, we will have the Q and A session in the end, and so feel free to uh, use the the question uh, that you the question feature you have in your screen to to send us your questions. Uh, I'm going to talk about how to use the Civit Flat platform, but first uh, let me tell you that is already being quite used. We have been nine months live. And so far in this period, we have uh, more than 2,000 users. Um, they have in total visited um, more than 38,000 pages, uh, all of them. 
and for every if in on average per session they visit uh, six pages which means that they browse through the website and not just uh, land in one page and, and leave um, the bounce rate of the website is forty uh, percent which is kind of average for the for this um, kind of informational websites and the average session duration is um, roughly 10 minutes so when someone enters the CBIT platform tends to navigate for roughly on average 10 minutes we have been mostly attracting new visitors as we have also quite new but there is already a um, an interesting percentage of 18% returning visitors. Most of our visitors um, use their desktop computers. A small percentage are on mobile and a very small percentage use tablets. And our users come from all over the world. Um, as you can see the map, uh, the blue color is uh, countries that visit us and the gray color countries that are not visiting so much or have not yet visited. Uh, the dark, darker blue are the areas where most visitors come from. So now I will um, explain um, a bit uh, how the platform looks like. I'll give an overview uh, how it looks for any visitor and for a visitor with login. To access the CBIT platform, you need to type in the address www.cbitplatform.org and uh, you will arrive at a home page. In this home page, you can see there is a menu at the top with different options. There is here an inviting image to, to know more about what is the Civit platform. This takes, when you click this, you will go to the about page and you will learn about what is the Civit Global Coordination Platform and the CBIT initiative. Um, you, we have here in the central part of the home page, the Civit projects map. There. Are in this map, you can see projects in different status with uh, different colors according to the status. And um, when you click in one of these uh, countries, you will get a pop-up where you can link directly to the project and also see the status of the project. Scrolling down a bit more, here we have this banner where we link with the ICAT initiative, which it's also an initiative that we are very uh, coordinating and very in interlinked with. And we have the final bottom two, two blocks here at the bottom. One to display what is new in terms of content in the, in the library, which is something we will see uh, in, the, in a later part. And here also uh, some highlighted article that we can also f see in, the, in another section of the website. This is also a list of the uh, upcoming events. And this is how the home page look like. When you click on projects, you will, you will access first um, a search top bar where you can search by keyword or you can filter projects by different uh, kinds of uh, variables. So we have, for example, for project status, you ca we can select here projects under different status. And we can, for example, select the country name here as well, s filter by area, adaptation, mitigation, and also by implementing agency. Let's see, for example, projects uh, for UN environment. Uh, here displays the entire list of projects that have the, the agency, impl the implementing agency UN environment. You can also click um, can also um, select by key, select um, a project by typing a keyword to search. Let's say Uruguay. There is search, and the results appear here, and the link to the project page. The project page is, as you know, just uh, description of the project, details, also other sections of 
information about the the project the indicators that the project um, is met is um, is tracking the project implementation what what are the activities the project is implementing the state of the national transparency systems this is where the information about the self-assessment tool uh, appears when it's completed by the country and here information public information about the country that is mostly available uh, in different places of the UNFCCC website and also statistics from UN data we gather compile all this information in this section about the country where we can see uh, a summary of the transparency information available the national communications BURs and also a summary of the climate policy in terms of public documents that are available and that we can uh, find in UNFCCC website. The national determined contributions, the NAMA registry submissions and also the, um, these other submissions like long-term strategies and national adaptation plans. Finally, we have uh, a tab here that shows other transparency initiatives in the country. This will be the place where uh, there will be information about other uh, ongoing projects that are dealing with, trans with um, transparency capacity in the country. We have another section here uh, in the menu, the library. The library shows uh, documents related with the transparency, especially the enhanced transparency framework. We, uh, the focus has been uh, documents and publications that discuss the enhanced transparency framework. And it's also possible to search by keyword, by typing here, and also this, uh, selecting different types of, do of documents, also different sectors depending on the content of the document and different language we have lang documents in english french and spanish we have this section named perspectives which is a section where we collect um, views from countries implementing projects we have right now only three articles this area of the website is intended to grow as projects start to implement their CBIT projects. Uh, when you click it in the title, you you will see the um, the project uh, article opening up, and in this case, it's an interview about the about the project CBIT in this country. And we have this area named forum. This is an area for in interactions between participants in this platform. Right now has an open an open topic uh, calling for feedback on the CBIT platform. Uh, wish list of features, what would be the features desired in this platform, additional to the ones that already are here. Um, and we have also two other sections. One is CBIT webinar where we have we are displaying the webinar that we we organize in june last year and the, this webinar will also show up here later when it's ready to be uh to be up with the video to be uploaded and the civit workshops the first and the second civit workshops are all information and and the presentations are shown showed up here and when you click on these links you will get to have a new page opening where you can see the presentation and download it to your computer if you want to. Next we have this events. It's a list of upcoming events that is showing up here. And finally the about page which was already shown. There's also a search bar here on the top. It's possible to search the entire platform with a term here. For example, inserting a, a country name and find out what exists already in the, in the platform about this country. I'll, I'll just type Chile and hit search. And then we can see that there are six uh, results, a project, a perspective, article, an event, no, two events and some, a uh, knowledge resource. This is a document in the library and another perspective article that also has the um, this term Chile. So now I will show you 
Um, this is what anyone will see when coming to the website. Now I'll show you the other part of the website where um, where registered users uh, access additional features. To become a registered user, the first step is to register. And to register, most of you, uh, most of the countries in the CBIT platform have already registered. Uh, you need to provide some information, your name, the, and the email. I suggest, highly recommend that you provide an email that you are using and that receives uh, and that will allow you to receive email directly from related to the CBIT platform. And also select here, uh, who do you work for? Do you work for a development agency? Or do you work for a country implementing a CBIT project? And here is the list of the countries. Let's see, for example, one that has not yet registered. Uh, then it asks about your sector, if you are in one of these IPCC sectors or other. And if it's a country that has not yet registered um, anyone, it will ask if you are a national focal point. If that's the case, just check yes, and then check this box and click register. When you do that, you will receive an email and that email will give you further instructions to validate your account. And we also validate that information when you register. We have our own records about um, the, the, the CIVIT uh, teams in the countries and we verify if, the, um, if with our own contacts, uh, if that register registering um, user is the actual uh, focal point for that country. So if you already register, you log in, and when you log in, you will access other parts of the of the website, which I will show in a minute. When you log in, the first thing you see is your dashboard. Dashboard is where there are uh, links and shortcuts to the information that uh, is specific to you, to your user. And this information specific to you, the first part is like you can see the first part that is shown to you is your profile. Here's your, the name, the first, the last name and some summary. Well, when you first log in, if you didn't provide a photo, you, you won't have this information. So I suggest you edit and uh, verify the information that is there and complete with a picture and um, a, a, a short description about who you are. This information that you provide here will be useful because uh, it, it will be possible to, to have in the project page your um, a, a way of people contacting the CIVIT focal point in the country. So this is why it's important to, com to complete your profile with a picture and a summary. Then you have information about your country, where there is information that can be changed and also uh, completed when more, more, for example, when a new national communication comes up. Information about the projects, and you can edit and view the projects. Information about documents that you have submitted to the library, events that you have created in the platform, any recommended resources that have been provided to you, and the self-assessment tool. Besides this uh, dashboard, you can also um, access other parts, parts of the website where you will see that you are allowed to do a couple more things. So for example, if you go to the library now, as logged in, you see that you can add um, a knowledge resource, which is a document to our library. And you can also click in the forum now and you see you can add a topic, which was something that was not possible before. And you can also add an event. As for projects, an additional feature that you have for a project is that it's now possible to to edit the information of the project. 
you have here a tab that allows you to edit and it's also possible to download a PDF report with the, um, with the information about the project. Okay, so this was the first um, overview of the platform. Uh, what you can do as a usual visitor and when you have a login, the additional things you can do. Um, as, it, as we could see, it's, uh, the login gives you an additional possibilities different to any other visitor. For example, as a focal point of the CIVIT project, you can change information in the CIVIT project page. You can complete the self-assessment tool, provide input for the self-assessment tool, add a document to the library, announce an event in the platform and create a topic or in the forum or comment in the forum. The country representative and this uh, other type of user country representative it rep basically refers to um, a member of the CIVIT team or a, a colleague collaborating in the CIVIT project that is um, also registered in the CIVIT platform. They can also um, provide input for the self-assessment tool. And this is one of the features that I will demonstrate next. They can also add documents to the library and announce events in the platform and contribute topics and comments to the forum. Any other visitor, they are not allowed to do most of these things. They can only comment in the forum and to do so, they will have to provide, way, together with a comment, uh, a name and an email to be validated. This is to avoid uh, a lot of spam in these commenting um, options for the forum. So next, um, uh, I'm going to demonstrate how to use the self-assessment tool. This uh, basically will have two parts. One is how to gather input to complete the tool. This is totally optional. This is just a scenario where um, perhaps you, you would like to have uh, colleagues providing input on this tool as well before um, the, the national focal point for the CIVIT project submits the, the country, the country self-assessment tool and um, how, how this can be done, how collaboratively you can uh, gather this input with, um, with the self-assessment tool in the CIVIT platform. I will now demonstrate how to use the self-assessment tool. The self-assessment tool is accessible from the dashboard of uh, your user. So when you log in, you see the dashboard and there has different options here on the left side. You click on the self-assessment tools and you'll see the, the self-assessment tools that are available for your country. Here we can see that there are two. One is active, the other one is not ready. If you click on the one that is not ready, you get to see the self-assessment questionnaire, but you are not able to change and to fill in any of these questions. So you can only um, use the one that is active. Let's click on that one. When you click on that one, you get to see the self-assessment and the different parts of the self-assessment. It has different sections. So the introductory section tells, explains what is the self-assessment tool and that it has four parts covering the different areas of the enhanced transparency framework. And then you scroll down and you see the first section appearing, some instructions at the top, and then also um, different parts for this section and then the actual questions. The questions have um, are multiple choice questions, so you have for each question a number of options, but also an open uh, answer possibility. So if you choose this answer, other, please use this box here to explain uh, what does it mean other, uh, so that we can um, uh, analyze the answer when we receive the submission of the self-assessment tool. One possibility that you have with the self-assessment tool is to collaborate with your colleagues, perhaps in other ministries or in the, uh, within the CB team to collect information to complete this assessment. Let's say you wanted to collect information about adaptation from some of your colleagues. So um, one way to do this, and it's possible with the self-assessment tool, is to Click this button here in front of each section. There is a button like this, action. Click this button, actions, and select delegate question. When you do this, the, um, the platform will show you another page where you see that you are delegating a group of questions for section one, 
in this case National Greenhouse Gas Inventory, and asks you to type the name of the country representatives that you want to delegate. These country representatives would be the, your colleagues that are working perhaps in another ministry or in a in also, or also in the civic team and that also are registered in the civic platform that's important they need to be registered as well otherwise they they're, they will not be any any persons to delegate the questions to when you put your cursor here you will see the names of the users that are registered for the same country as you are in this case i'm going to delegate to annabella and i'm going to hit delegate i can see here that was successful. The question was delegated to Annabella Doe and it had already been delegated also to another person named Jane Doe. But um, let's say I don't want two persons, I just want um, one to answer my this section of the questionnaire, I'll just delete this one. Click on actions, delete and then click delete. And here I have the question delegated to my colleague Annabella Doe. So what happens now? Now when Annabella Doe logs in, she also has a dashboard like I did. And so in, in the options of her dashboard, she has less options than I do. She doesn't have, for example, um, my recommended documents, but she has an option my self-assessment self tools. When she clicks on that, she'll get to see the questions that were delegated to her. And she clicks on that questions, she sees the entire uh, group of questions section one, she opens and then she can click in the, in the answers and, and fill in this part of the, of the self-assessment tool. When she finishes completing the, um, this section of the self-assessment tool, she can save if she wants to come back and change something later or she can click on submit and the answers are locked and not possible to change and will be possible to be uh, revised and seen by um, the country focal point, the country civic focal point. So if some of the questions are not answered, there will be a message showing which question was not answered. In this case, it's question number one. And here is uh, this red box highlighting that this question needs an answer. So when this one is answered as well, scroll down and then submit as this um, section of the questionnaire is submitted. There is a message showing success. And right now, the self-assessment tool, in this case, is still active, but answered shows here, yes. Now, going back to Mary Do, our CBIT focal point, um, she receives an uh, email saying uh, that uh, her colleague um, has submitted an answer for the section that uh, was uh, waiting for input. So she clicks on self-assessment tools and again checks how it is the self-assessment. And right now it appears like nothing has changed but if, you, if we click here on actions we have more options now not just delegate question but also view answers. And here is the the answers that were submitted by, by our colleague Annabella Doe to the section one. The, op the questions are uh, marked as answered and it's not possible to change them. So this information can be used um, to, to, to complete the, um, the self-assessment as input additional information or um, to the final submission of the self-assessment. Uh, to do that, uh, one way to do it is to click with the right, with the right um, button of the mouse, open a new tab, so that there are two tabs right now. One is where the answers are showing up, and the other one is here, where 
the self-assessment tools are visible as well. By clicking here, can, it is now possible to complete the self-assessment. Let's see what, how, what was the answer that my colleague sent to me. Oh, there is an institution, so I click here. And, and that's some questions here are not required. They don't have the this little red asterisk. But some other questions here, part B, are required. So to some extent, my colleague thinks that's the answer. So I can answer the same or I can answer a different question, a different answer. But I can use the input that my colleague provided to fill in the questionnaire. When I fill in the questionnaire, it's the exact same process. Just complete the questions, especially the required ones. And uh, then hit submit. When you do that, the questionnaire is sent uh, is sent to the CBIT platform, and the the process of uh, analyzing the the submission starts. Uh, so when you submit the CBIT uh, self-assessment tool, we get a, a notification that the, the it was received by the CBIT platform, and so we we get to see all the information, and then we analyze it and provide a summary. This summary is then showed in the project implementation uh, tab in the project page. So I will now show you uh, how to update the information in the project page. So to, to access the uh, project, you just uh, can do it from the home page where you navigate through the map and click on a, on a name of a project and actually go to the project page. In the project page, as, uh, as was shown before, there are different sections. You can download this project page if you are logged in. And there is a first section with the project details where there is basic information about the project, when it was approved, when it did it start, what are the main outcomes, the stakeholders, and the knowledge management approaches. Um, you can also see that there are links directly to Jeff website where you can find the, the information about the, the project also there. There are also the project indicators from the CV tracking tool from Jeff, uh, the baseline and the targets, that, and also the um, indicators from the project results framework. So there is another tab there that is named project implementation and has a date which when it was updated and it shows the status of the activities of the, the, that the project uh, has. The activities have um, a status that can be a percentage, how much of the work was complete, or it can be entirely finished, and in that case it says completed. This tab, State of the National Transparency Systems, is where the information about the self-assessment tool results shows up. Here is where you will see what is the, the result of the answering the questions that you, we, you did when you submitted the self-assessment tool. And um, another tab is the country information where we have that information that is publicly available, available about the country in the um, UNFCCC website mainly and in, in UN databases and the other transparency initiatives in the country. So this is how the, the project page looks like for um, a project that is, is being implemented. So how do I change this information? I go to dashboard and I click on my country and I can change the information that shows up about my country, the, pub the public available information uh, in, this, in this part. I can change um, and I can add uh, documents uh, or links to documents in the UNFCCC website, and then I need to hit save when I do that. If I want to change the information in the, in the project page, I click on my edit in my country projects. I'll then have a different view that shows me uh, different tabs. 
project details, project indicators, project implementation, and state of national transparency system. Some of the fields in this, in this part um, of the project page are not possible to be changed, but some allow changes. So start date and end date can be changed. Can add a, a project focal point, and this will be basically the information that we have about uh, the focal point of the country. And then we have project indicators. You can also change this information, add any indicators that are not shown in this uh, already in the project page. Uh, typically, we complete as much information as possible using the CEO endorsement document and the PIF document from the Jeff website. So we, we complete as much as possible to avoid that uh, CBIT focal points have to upload a lot of information. Now the top project implementation. This is an important one because here you can you have a, a, tech, um, a text field where you can add free text describing the progress of the country with a limit of um, a number of characters. And here you have uh, the possibility to change the percentage of completeness of the activities that the project is implementing. So for example, for this uh, first activity, A1, you can change uh, in this box, the status to uh, a value from zero to 100 to say how much percentage of the work has been completed. Um, all the project activities and deliverables are listed here as they are uh, described in the CEO endorsement document. We only use the sources of information we have uh, from uh, the Jeff website so far. So if there is, um, if for some reason is incomplete, uh, it can be um, further completed by the CBIT focal point. The project documents, this is a section also in the project implementation where you can add project related documents. Uh, these are documents that are related with the implementation of the project and you can click on add new document. It opens um, a form to fill up the information about new document and you can also add the project events, events related with implementation of the project can add a new event, or if for some reason you didn't, uh, you already had some event, you can add an existing one. Always remember to save the information you change, otherwise it will not be uh, reflected in the project page. Let's see how to add a new document now. When you click on add new document, you'll see a form where you need to fill, it, fill in the title, the summary, and the language of the document. You can upload documents in, different, in the three different languages, English, French, and Spanish. And also a, a way to, to um, upload the file. And then uh, remember, save when you do that. And to add an event, just click on add new event. another form pops up and then you have options to fill in the type of the event a title for the event and some description about it when it where it was when was the start date what was the hour and in which time zone if there is a registration link can also be provided here and additional fields that are not required, but you can also add them, of course, if you have the information. Documents and photos related with that document, with that event can also be added. And then hit create event. When you hit create event, don't forget you need to save in any case, because the information in the project will only be, be uh, saved when you click on save. So this is how you can change the information in the project implementation. Regarding the state of national transparency system, it's possible for the country to provide also a summary about the, the capacity for transparency activities in the country. Also needs to be saved 
if uh, any information in this uh, state of net transparency systems is added. So it's also possible to view from the link in the dashboard. And here is the information, uh, how it looks to the, um, any, any visitor. Uh, and also the link to, uh, a link to connect with the Civit uh, focal point for this project. The different percentages of completeness of these activities and yeah, the project documents also are listed and the project events that have happened in, in relation with implementation of this project. The project we are seeing, by the way, is the CIVIT Global Coordination Platform. Um, this, this project page reflects the implementation of the project at this stage and uh, basically it's um, update up to it's updated when the activities are completed it's also also possible to download a pdf file of this project with a report of um, how the activities are uh, the percentage of com of implementation of the activities and uh, the, di the different um, characteristics of this project This is how the report looks like in PDF. This is the possibility to, to download only exists when you are logged in. Yeah, so additional to this, we have um, events page where we list upcoming events and it's also possible to add events from here and then later to link them with the project. And as said before, we have possibility to um, receive documents that you upload for our library. So if you think any document should be in our library, it's possible for you to, to send any information to us. Thank you very much, Anna, for this um, introduction to the different features of the, of the platform. As I mentioned in the beginning, the, this webinar is being recorded and will be available at the uh, platform tomorrow or the day after. So um, now we um, are going to start the Q&A uh, session and we have uh, received quite a few questions. So we start from the from the first one, and the first question is, uh, what do a country need to get access to the platform? And I think I can answer that one. Um, you simply have to, and it was also explained, I think, in in Anna's presentation, that you just go to the to the to the website and and register either as a, as a user or as a country focal point. And that can be anyone can can register as a as a user, but only country focal points that actually um, have a project which is at least at at the PIF stage will be able to uh, to register as a country focal point, and um, and that's basically because we have only created project pages for countries that have um, a PIF for CBLC project. The next question is, is the platform only available in English? And yes, right now it is only available in English. Um, it is something that we are looking at to expand and, and uh, make it available in both French and Spanish. We are considering different options, but in the near future, I hope it will be available also in other in in, in French and, and and Spanish. The third question is, um, how do I know if my country is registered? And so I'll yeah. I'll take this one. Uh, basically, when you register, um, if if your country already registered uh, the national focal point, 
you will not see the option are you the, the question are you a national focal point when you register so the example i gave for cameroon it was showing a, a country that had not registered no one at the moment so when you select the country name uh, you see this question appearing uh, are you the national focal point it means that no one has registered yet as, as of that moment uh, if someone has already registered um that question will not be uh will not be visible so that can tell you if your country has registered at least one person thank you anna the next question is what is the difference between uh, a country representative and the focal point okay so this one um i, I provided that uh, table where i show what can one and the other do the idea is that um, the national focal point is basically the contact person for the CBIT project. So there has to be one person that is like the go-to person to ask questions about this project. Uh, and we, this figure, this person is the CBIT project focal point. Um, country representatives are basically any other um, members of the CV team in the country or colleagues in other ministries, but also engage in the, in the CV project, preferably, of course, that uh, can register and can provide input for the self-assessment tool. That's one thing they can do. And can also provide uh, additional content for the CV platform, for example. They can announce events. And as you can see, we have already a user base that can see these events being announced uh, in Civit platform or can uh, use the platform to promote any documents that uh, make sense to be added to the library. So the, the country representative is not the, the go-to person in terms of the Civit project, but it is someone that can also contribute and be engaged in the Civit platform as well. Okay, thank you, Anna. The next question is, what is the purpose of the self-assessment tool? And yeah, I can I can take that one. Um, so the self-assessment tool um, is the purpose is that to to allow countries to understand what the gaps in the transparency systems are, and also to see how they uh, progress and how they strengthen their capacities throughout the implementation of the CBIT project. So this is supposed to, to um, allow countries to also maybe target other projects um, into the areas where there are gaps. So they can fill in these gaps that are being um, demonstrated through the self-assessment tool. It's also, so Jeff, they can see how the CBIT projects actually strengthen uh, national transparency systems. The next question is, who defines the list of countries who can use the CIVIT platform? So this question, um, as of now, we have um, a list of countries that is basically the non-Annex 1 countries, in the, the non-Annex 1 to the UNFCCC uh, list of countries. Uh, this list can be amended when, uh, if and when additional countries get to, to access uh, CIVIT support so the list is basically um, can be changed it's it's at the moment defined by this um, constraint of uh, non-annex one countries but can be changed i can just add to that that any country can of course register as a normal user and and go to the platform and and look for information but to get a project page you need a cdit project the next question is can only the focal point submit information uh, to the self-assessment tool? Yeah, so as, as I was demonstrated, perhaps not very clear, but um, what, what was meant to be demonstrated was that the, sum, the submission of the self-assessment tool to the CIVIT platform, the final submission, for, uh, for, is done by the, the CIVIT focal point. The country representative can provide input to the, to the CIVIT focal point, to fill in the self-assessment tool and submit. So basically, it's a collaborative tool to gather input, but only the national uh, CIVIT focal point can submit 
the, the, the self-assessment tool. Uh, there's another question asking, can we use local language in text fields? Um, at the moment, we, we are expecting that the platform will have besides English, French and Spanish. So when we have that implemented, we will have uh, fields uh, and versions, different versions of the, of the platform for these three languages. And when that is happening, it will be possible to use Spanish or French in the text fields. No other languages will be uh, possible to use because otherwise it gets uh, quite difficult to understand. Remember that it, the platform is not only for the country to read what is there about the country, but mostly for others to uh, to know uh, also what is happening, and they must uh, be they must be able to understand that language. So for the moment, only English is what can be used. We expect that French and Spanish will be uh, also possible when we when we expand this platform in the future. And then one is asking if it will be recorded. Yes, it will be recorded and available. The link will be sent out after the the, the webinar. And we'll also uh, share uh, a guideline, a document that we have done with, the inf with more information about how to use the platform. Um, the next question is, the platform is pre-filled with country-related data from the UNFCCC and the GF website. Shall further update of countries info be responsibility of the country focal point or will it be automatic? So, as I said, we will gather most of the information that is publicly available and uh, provide this information as part of our support to to all the project pages. So we will gather information from UNFCCC uh, regularly and also from Jeff website. So the idea is to minimize the amount of uh, work to be done by the CIBIT focal point and the country representatives. But um, as I said, uh, if this information for some reason is not up to date, of course, and if the focal point has more up to date information, it can be updated by them as well. Uh, regarding the monitoring and evaluation system of UNDP, uh, the question asks if it's possible to connect these two platforms, the, the CBIT platform and the monitoring and evaluation system in this case of UNDP. Um, right now, it's not possible, but but that's something we'll look into. Of course, um, we don't want to be an, an a burden for, for for the countries when we. Um, so so these details uh, regarding progress uh, of implementation, um, as 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 it is now, it's not possible to do to to merge these two systems. But we can discuss this with UNDP and and also maybe discuss it um, with. Jeff on how to do this, uh, but but thank you very much for the input and and it's we take note of the of the issue. The last one is, is the country focal point someone from the government office or can it be the project manager from the CPIT project? Uh, we have had uh, some discussion about that, but we have now agreed that it's uh, up to the country to decide who it who the country focal point should be. But the important thing is that. The country focal point should be someone that is involved in implementing the project and has a strong knowledge about the the project. Basically, involved in day-to-day -day implementation of the project. As long as 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 the person is 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 that involved, it's not important for us if it's uh, the project manager or government officer. It's up to the country. I think that's all. Uh, we have spent more than an hour now. Um, thank you very much for uh, for all your, your your great questions and uh, as i said the the webinar will be available on the platform so go there and and, and check it out again if needed and uh, we'll send out an email to all that has, has registered with uh, a guideline on on how to use the platform as well and um please also go to the all the country focal points please go to the platform and fill in the information about um yourself as the country focal point so we can start the, the peer learning and, um, and i think that's it for today thank you very much for the participation and um, have a great day